Welcome to my journey with Paula G, where we are juggling this journey called life while we're walking in the gifts and the talents that God has given us. I am your host, Paula G, and I welcome each and every one of you. If this is your first time on the journey, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you are a returning listener or viewer, we certainly appreciate you always, each and every episode. You all know I always say that time is precious. It's the one thing that you cannot get back. So for you to think and not robbery to spend this time with us is truly, truly appreciated. We also like to thank those who are embracing the journey through their underwriting support, and that would be our underwriters. We thank them so much because without them, we would not have the opportunity to bring you this programming. So we are very, very appreciative of them. And if you're interested in gaining exposure for your business, for your product or your service, you can reach out to us at jerryvoicelive at gmail.com or paula at paulagvoice.com. Make sure you put underwriting opportunities in the subject line and we'll be sure to follow up with you as well also. You can stay connected with me, with me across the board, Paula G Voice, my website, Paula G Voice, social media, I Paula G Voice, I for, for everyone. <laughs> All right, today, you know, I want to talk with you a little bit today about you're never too old. There's this quote that I heard some years ago, and I, I think it rings so very true. I think it's by a gentleman by the name of George Eliot, I think. And it states that you're never too old to be what you might have been. And I was reading this scripture and it kind of got me to thinking about this particular um, topic. And the scripture comes from Luke 1, well, Luke 1, which is the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth. Zachariah and Elizabeth were advanced in years and the angel Gabriel came to Zechariah and told him, oh, let me straighten my glasses, y'all, came to, to Gabriel and told him that they were to have a child. And Zechariah is, you know, kind of like, okay, we, you know, we, we not spring chickens. My wife is advanced in age. I'm advanced in age we're not spring chickens. And he had this, this doubt, this, this unbelief. So therefore the angel Gabriel told him that he would be mute. He would not be able to speak because of his doubt. He would not be able to speak until after the child was born. And I started kind of reading this and it just it just kind of resonated with me. I I'm going to share a little bit with you. It kind of might hop around some verses. So if you have a, your Bible, this is the English Standard Version, I believe. But if you have your, your Bible, whatever version it is that you may have. And it comes from Luke 1, verse. we'll start with verse 5. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah. And he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and statutes of the Lord. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. Now, while he was serving as a priest before God, when his division was on duty, according to the custom of the priesthood, he was chosen by a lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. And there appeared to be an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him and fear fell upon him, that fear. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you shall call his name John. So they had prayed for years for a child and Elizabeth was barren. They, they had not produced a child. And you will have joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth for he will be great before the Lord and he must not drink wine or strong drink and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. And he will turn away many of the children and he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord, their God. 
and he will go and he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elisha to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. Zechariah said to the angel, how shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel answered, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. And behold, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day that these things take place because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time. And the people were waiting for Zechariah and they were wondering at his delay in the temple. And when he came out, he was unable to speak to them and they realized that he had seen a vision in the temple and he kept making signs to them and remained mute. And when his time of service was ended, he went to his home. So let's just think about this for a minute. Imagine being in the temple. Imagine being Zechariah, an angel coming to you telling you that you and your wife are going to have a child. You're advanced in years. You have been praying for this for years. And at some point, it sounds like they gave up at some point, that they got discouraged. They lost faith. You were in advance in years that, you know, this is not going to occur. And when the angel comes to him and says that, yes, you all are going to have a child, even though you are advanced in years, Zechariah didn't believe it. He had lost hope. He had lost faith. He had lost courage. He had lost the, the vision. He had lost the dream of having a child. Because he didn't believe the angel Gabriel, Gabriel took his voice and said it would not return until after the child was born. Have there been dreams that you have had or ideas goals that you have had over the years that have not come to fruition, that have not manifested and you've given up on those dreams, you've given up on those goals, you've given up on that hope. You said, you know, it's it's too late. I tried. It's too late. I tried. I failed. I tried. I failed. I tried. I failed. I would, I would start and then something would happen and then I couldn't complete it. All of these obstacles and you're at the point now where you have given up on that dream or that goal. But yet you keep waking up every day. You still have life in your body. Every day that you wake up is an opportunity. It is an opportunity to do something toward manifesting that dream or manifesting that goal that you have. And we're going to take a break in a couple minutes. And when we come back from the break, I want to talk with you. I have four things, four suggestions that I have in regard to reawakening those forgotten dreams, re reawakening those dead dreams, reawakening those things that, well, I've always wanted to do it, but yeah, that was a great idea back then because you can fill in the blank, but I'm unable to complete it now because, and you ask yourself, why can't we go back and fulfill those forgotten dreams? Because like George Eliot says, it's never too late to be what you might have been. Just imagine the possibilities. Miles Monroe says what? The richest place on the planet is the cemetery because so many go to their graves having not fulfilled their dreams. Because what I always talk about is that conversation in between our ears. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more. And I have about four or five things that I want to share with you that hopefully will encourage you to move forward, fulfill those forgotten dreams, because it's never too late, as George Eliot says, to be what you might have been. This is my journey with Paula G. I'm your host, Paula G. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few moments. Don't go anywhere.
good we magnify lord we glorify lord we exalt your holy name lord we magnify lord we glorify lord we exalt your holy For you are awesome in this place, and your presence we embrace. For you are awesome in this place, oh Lord. Lord, we magnify, Lord, we glorify, we exalt your hope. Welcome back to my journey with Paula G, where we are juggling this journey called life while we're walking in the gifts and talents that God has given us. My, my name is Paula G, and I'm your host for this show. So before the break, we were talking about it's never too old. And I was sharing with you a bit of the story about Elizabeth and Zechariah, how they had been praying for a child for years. Elizabeth was barren. They were advanced in age and they had not yet had a child. So they had all but given up hope. But the angel Gabriel came to Zechariah and said, indeed, yes, you would have a child. But Gabriel, I mean, Zechariah didn't believe them because they were advanced, advanced in age. And he was, you know, we're, we're too old to have children at this, at this point. And we've just kind of given up on it. So the angel told Zechariah that he would not be able to speak. He would take his voice from him until the child was born. And he was taking his voice from him because of his lack of faith and his disbelief of what the angel was telling him. And as I was reading this during my Bible study time uh, one day, it just prompted me to really think about 
how, you know, a lot of times we, we have these, these dreams that we envision and we have these goals and so forth. And it kind of got me to thinking about it, it never being too late to be what you might have been, whatever it is that you have desired in your life, as long as you're living and breathing and you have resources and capabilities, it is never too late. There's this woman that I came across on social media, and I believe her name is Diane Britt Smith, I believe. Y'all don't quote me on that, but I believe that's her name. And she, I believe, is um, a woman that is married. She's got two grown and I think she did a photo of her husband's birthday or something some uh, couple years ago. And the photographer suggested that she submit her photo to local modeling agencies. And she lives in New York. So the photos were submitted to the modeling agency, one of the prestigious modeling agencies in New York. And this woman wound up with a contract. She had never modeled before in her life absolutely never modeled before in her life. And she now has a contract with a major prestigious modeling agency. And this woman is in her seventies. And I've seen a couple of them like that on social media. And I can recall when I started my own journey with print modeling, and it's been rather recent in the last few years that I started the journey. It was something that I had dreamed about when I was younger. It was something that I'd always wanted to do when I was younger. And I dabbled in it a bit when I was younger. But, you know, after college, I graduated and I was, you know, working for a while and just, just did just a little bit of modeling, but then got married, had children. My husband was in the military. So we were, you know, all over the planet, you know, with, with no real consistency for me to launch a, a modeling career or any other career for that matter. Um, so I just kind of put that dream on the back burner. And as of recent, in the last few years, you know, I, I do these photo shoots for my brand and, and, and the photos, you know, that we utilize for our brands, as do a lot of us. And I started thinking about it again. And I said, well, you know, maybe I can, maybe I can dabble back into it. Then I was like, nah, I'm too old. It's too late. All of those things. But what I didn't realize is that in this particular season, you have a lot of baby boomers that who a lot of us are now retiring. You know, we have some have a bit of income where they're traveling or going on cruises or engaging in timeshares or whatever, whatever it is, they're just enjoying life. So now we have these advertisers that are, are wooing baby boomers with different ads from medication, Medicare, um, AARP, um, different insurance companies, different, different vacation spots, different cruise lines, all of these, all of these retailers and all of these businesses trying to woo the baby boomer dollar. So therefore they're looking for models for their particular ads. So there has become this whole market that has been created out of a, a need, well, not necessarily a need, but this whole market that has been created out of identifying a market that has the income um, from which, you know, these, these businesses and companies and whatever, you know, are seeking their dollars. So therefore there becomes an opportunity to model. So I've, I've done a bit of modeling and I'm looking to do a bit more of modeling, but at my age, I'm not quite 70, but I'm not in my fifties either. You know, I've, I've gotten a bit of work in the, the photos. Some of you may have seen them in the, in the um, CDC ads, the healthcare ads, the AARP ads, the uh, Emory ads. Um, there was one that was, that was uh, printed in BBC. There was an ad in BBC. And as I have shared with you all before, if you have a desire, if you have a, 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 a dream, Lift it up to God and ask God, if this is according to your will, open the doors of opportunity. Give me the discernment to recognize when you have opened those doors of opportunity so that I may walk through those doors of opportunity and into what it is that I desire. So I just have a few things here that I want to kind of share with you that I feel, or at least these are some things that I kind of had to, had to do myself 
to kind of get myself going and get myself in the in the headspace to move forward in what it is that I desire to do. And the first is the mindset. I talk about this all the time. Mindset, that conversation in between your ears. I always close the show with the same phrase that the greatest conversation you will ever have is the one that takes place in between your ears. What are you speaking to yourself? Is God a part of that conversation? And are you listening to his still small voice? Because he will lead you and guide you and direct you. So your mindset, what is it that you are speaking to yourself? Are you speaking that I can't do it? Or are you speaking that you can do it? We've, we've got to change that narrative in between our ears. And I know we hear this a lot, you know, if we're watching videos or if we're, we're reading self-help books about the mindset and changing our mind, but it is so incredibly true because if you have a computer and whatever you put into that computer, it's going to output. So junk in, junk out. But if you put some, some, some good positive stuff in there, it will render some good positive stuff. Brain is the same way. So we really have to meditate on that conversation in between our ears to a more positive conversation that yes, there are going to be obstacles in the way, but if, 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 if God has said that this is something that is for us, that this is something that, that he desires of us, then we need to continue to move in that direction. Unlocking that negative, that, that negative mindset. I'm speaking to myself, unlocking that negative mindset of, I can't do this. What if I fail? Um, I don't know how the, I don't know how we can figure that out. The, I can'ts are only because we're telling ourselves that we cannot do it. And then, you know, you get to that point where you, you, you've done your homework, you've done your research, you've done your work, just step out and do it. Just do it afraid. I, I think that was a phrase from Joyce Meyer where she, and she wrote a book, do it afraid. You just, you, I don't know how many times, the first time I was in front of a camera, I think my jaw was <laughs> shaking. I was trying to smile. I think my whole face was like, my teeth were chattering. I was so nervous when that first photo shoot, but you've got to step out and you've got to face those fears and overcome those fears so that you can accomplish what it is that you desire to accomplish. And then once that accomplishment occurs, once you see the fruits of your labor, you got to come back like that one leopard that came back and thank God you got to come back. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for answering this prayer. Thank you for paving the way. Thank you for getting me through the obstacles so that I can complete this journey of what it is that I desire to do. You know, sometimes I hear stories about people who are advanced in age and there, there were things that they desired to do when they were younger. And in that particular season of their lives, they were healthy, they were vibrant. Yes, they were advanced in age, but they were healthy, they were vibrant, and they went on to fulfill those things. And I want to encourage each and every one of you today that whatever your dream is, now, granted, if you, you know, want, always wanted to be an astronaut in your, in your 50s or 60s, chances are you aren't going to be an astronaut. So we kind of have to keep all this in perspective, but perhaps there is something that you can do that's related to the, to the space field that will give you that same sense of fulfillment. Perhaps you can't be a, a basketball star like you wanted to, but perhaps you can coach a basketball team. Finding something that is related to that dream. If you can't fulfill that dream itself, finding something that is related to that dream that you can do and you can fulfill that dream, but perhaps in a different way. So, you know, our time always goes so quickly. We have come to the end of our journey. <laughs> we have come to the end of our journey. I always have to watch my time, but I hope that encouraged you all to embrace your journey, embrace your dreams, write the vision, make it plain, make a plan, execute that, that plan, move forward, jump into it, Listen to that still small voice because God will lead you. He will guide you and he will direct you and move all doubt. Don't have the doubt that Zechariah had. Don't have the doubt that he had. Move forward and trust and believe that God will meet you at your point of need. And remember, as I've said, the greatest conversation that you will ever have is the one that takes place in between your ears. What are you speaking to yourself? Is God a part of that conversation? And are you listening to his still small voice? Until next time, remember, it's never too late to be what you might have been. That's a quote by George Eliot. Until next time, embrace those dreams and embrace your journey.
glorify, Lord, we glorify, Lord, we exalt your holy name. Lord, we magnify, Lord, we glorify, Lord, we exalt your holy name. your presence we embrace for you are awesome in this place